live in Avio's journey. It is 1 p.m. on Thursday, the October 31st. That's Halloween. Welcome. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. Today, I'm going to be talking about three ways to create characters for any voiceover read that you have. And I, I really believe that this talk today is really going to help you out. And I suggest that you save this video because there's gonna be some really great points in here. And as I said, three different ways I'm gonna go over for you to create a character for any voiceover read, whether it's a character voice or it's a read for a commercial or anything like that. These three steps are things that you can use and play around with. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about really quickly before we dive into those three methods uh, about the purpose of your demo. Okay. And where I'm going with all of this. So first and foremost, any demo that you do, you have to be able to recreate those characters. Now, mind you, everything that I'm, when I say character at this point, what I'm talking about is every single thing that you do from commercial work to audiobook work, to animation work, to radio, whatever you are doing, all of these are characters. Okay. That's, I mean, technically they are characters. We are character actors because we are going to create characters. Now, whether or not, you know, the character is closer to how you specifically speak, OK, that's fine. It's still a character. So I just want to get that out there. And as I'm talking about the demo really quickly, it's so important that you make sure that all the slots on your demos are different and that you can recreate them. They are different in the tonality and the style and you can recreate them. So moving into tonality and style, I want to talk a little bit and just give you definitions uh, of those two because we're going to be using them a lot in these three different ways to create characters. So when we're talking about style, I want you to think of style as an overall genre or you know area that voiceover falls into. For example, like... Uh, biographies or documentaries or commercial work or e-learning or audiobook, et cetera. Okay. So that would be a style that a voiceover. Now, when we go into tone, okay, tone refers to like the emotion that you're relaying, the um, you know, like like for example, uh, happy or sad or um, incredulous or matter of fact, these types of terms, these adjectives, okay, they help determine the tone. Okay, so style is an overall genre or you know section of voiceover, and then tone is going to be the emotion that you are giving off. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, cool. So. Hey, everybody, it's good to have you. So real quick, let's dive into these things, okay? We've got way number one. And again, this is three ways to create characters for any voiceover. I love this approach. It's called the mind map approach. And I used to use this when I taught theater all the time to helping people when I taught playwriting to come up with uh, ideas for plays and so forth, you know? So anyways, this is the mind map approach. And if you know what a mind map is, basically it is a, a series of different ideas or thoughts that we put together and they all connect to the main idea. All right. And that's how we can, you know, generate one singular idea from all these different thoughts. So here we go. Way number one, the mind map approach. I want you to write down, there's going to be uh, some things I'm going to give you to come up with this first technique. So first, what you will do is you get a piece of paper, or your computer, and you are going to pick a style. All right. So let's say we choose documentary. All right. That's a style. You're going to write documentary down. All right. So let's say next we're going to pick a tone. And let's say this tone we picked is matter of fact. All right. So we write that down. All right. Now, next thing we're going to write down is like volume and positioning to mic. So let's say for the volume for this, we're going to do probably maybe about 50 percent of volume of our normal speaking voice. All right. So maybe something a little bit quieter like this. All right. We're kind of so where I'm like this, I can take it down. So maybe like 50 or 60 percent and mic positioning, mic positioning. I'm going to do my normal six inches from my mic. 
Okay, so I write that down. All right, now speed. I'm going to write down speed. So let's say that if I normally talk like this, I'm going to talk about 70% of that speed. So I'm going to start to talk a little bit slower. This is more like, you know, 70, 70, 80%, maybe 60 to 70% of the speed that I was talking at because I was going slower. Right. Okay. So I'm going to speed back up and talk a little more normal speed, like maybe a hundred percent of the way I normally talk. So I've written that down. And then the last thing I'm going to do is write down a mode. I'm going to choose a mode of expressiveness, meaning that I'm going to choose something uh, overall. Now you can choose multiple things, but I'm going to choose something overall to express uh, emotion or thought. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some pausing after a phrase. So every time I say a phrase, I'm going to pause. All right, take a breath, pause, give it some more context, some more thought so that you can think about what I've said as opposed to me just going through. So what I do with this first approach is I take all of that, write that down on a piece of paper, and now I have a complete way, a character that I can create from this mind map idea. And it pulls all of these different things from your style to the tone, to the volume, to the speed, to expressiveness. And hopefully you can see that by changing these and putting all kinds of different things down, you can create all sorts of ways to make voices and to make characters and all, I mean, it's, it's really a fantastic way. So that's called the mind map approach. And for every voiceover you do, you can use that to create a, a feel, a style, like I said, a tone and, uh, you know, give it really a unique approach. Okay. All right. So that's method number one. Method number two, I love this. This is this is the character imitation approach. And uh, I think, I don't know if I've, I think I might have talked about this one before a long time ago, but I'm going to talk about it again here and give you a little bit more information about it. So this next one is called the character imitation approach. So what I like to do is um, I like visuals to help me better um act and imitate, you know, because like, for example, you know, if I see something or I see something and I can pretend, I mean, I might pretend badly, but I can pretend I'm that something. Or if I have memory of an actor or something like that, you know what I mean? I can imitate again. It might not be the greatest, but I can kind of imitate them a little bit, right? We, we all do that. Whether we're good at it or not, doesn't matter. All right. But anyways, what I want you to do is, is I want you to go back to kind of the mind map idea, but this time you're going to go to Google you're going to pull up Google. You're going to type in a style. So let's say the style is commercial. So you type in commercial. All right. Then you're going to next, you're going to do a space and you're going to type in a tone. So let's say you type in funny. Okay. So you type in funny. All right. Next, you're going to type in an age. So like, you know, I'm 38. So I'm going to type in 38. Okay. And then I'm going to type in a gender. So I'm going to type in male. So as I type in those things, those four things, I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to go to the images and on the images bar, I'm going to, or when the images come up, I'm going to look at them and I'm going to see that's going to generate all these different people where those keywords and kind of bring that up. And, you know, you're going to find different faces, different actors, different thoughts because of the pictures that are there. And you can choose one of those pictures or multiple pictures to imitate or to give you ideas of what you can do in order to create a new character. I love this method because it really just brings out uh, all sorts of things, especially like all sorts of ideas. You know, like if you like, for example, if I typed all that in and like, you know, Jim Carrey came up, you know what I mean? Or for example, I did this last night. I typed that very thing in and you know who came up? It was that guy from, um, uh, that does those, uh, hotel commercials, you know, where, uh, Mr. Obvious, you know, it's like, he's Mr. Obvious, you know, like that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So it's like, that was actually a pretty cool idea because, you know, you, I, I, I I've seen those commercials and how that guy talks is kind of cadence it would be cool to be able to use that cadence and that idea for a funny commercial bit. All right. Do you see where I'm going with this? So this is another great way that you can create a character is through the, I call it the character image imitation. Okay. 
All right, so that's way number two. Now, way number three uh, is going to, I'm going to call it emotion uh, before and emotion after approach. So basically, and I've talked about this when I was talking about doing the conversational read a little bit, but when we want to generate feeling or motion or a different type of character through whatever acting we're doing, as voiceover artists, we don't have to worry about, you know, people watching us. Okay. We, we, we can record, we can stop and record and stop and record. So a great way to generate emotion or feeling, all right, is to overdo it before you start recording. So if you're going to, let's say you're starting to record something like, you know, you have, you've got a big, um, maybe like a, 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 a big, you know, going out of, you know, going out of business sale. All right. And, you know, you're going to want to be like over the top because, you know, some of these things are over the top, you know, like, you know, going out of business now. So what you can do is to start before you actually do your voiceover, you can start to act over the top and crazy yourself. If you know what I mean, and and take the copy, but go a thousand percent bigger than you would ever do it. And then when you go to record naturally, just like anything else, you only ever record at about 60 or 70 percent. Just like any of you have ever played sports or ever trained for something, you always train your hardest because when it comes time to perform, you know, you usually don't even perform at that hardest level all the time. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's a lot of fun. So if you can do crazy over the top, so like if I'm like, uh, if I'm getting excited and I want to be big and I'm getting this face out and I'm like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a copy that I could use for this. Maybe like, um, uh, you know, uh, uh you know, today, uh, yeah, like today only, Today only, you know, more sales than than you could ever imagine. Like I'm going crazy. And then I, I come over thinking, and I go, today only, more sales than you can ever imagine. Like it gets you in the mindset. It's fun, <laughs> but it gets you in the mindset of creating that emotion and you playing around with it and listening to it so that you don't have to wonder whether or not you can generate that emotion or not. Okay. Uh, it is a lot of fun and you can try this throughout and other things. I've talked about this a couple of times about turning on the record button on, you know, on your DAW and just recording and trying to find the right feeling, right? So if I'm trying to find the right feeling on a piece, I can record the first sentence or two a bunch of times before I feel like I found what I'm looking for. Do you know what I mean? Um, by the way, Here's a little bonus tip. So that was tip number three. A little bonus tip, uh, and then I'm going to finish up. I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter because <laughs> they're, they're going really long. Um, but the bonus tip is I want you to put together, and you can do this very simply, go on Google, but I want you to go on Google and search for adjectives, right? And you can even search for tone, but adjectives. And I want you to start writing a list down of adjectives, Okay. And within those adjectives, you know what I mean? The list that you're going to create, I want you to keep it handy. And I want you to take those adjectives and try to practice with some copy, um, you know, imitating the emotion, right? That those adjectives, uh, you know, give you or inspire you, right? The tone of them. And that's a great technique to help you grow and to diversify your demos or your own portfolio as a voice actor, you know, because a lot of things are, are going to shock you about the, the adjectives. And when you go to read them, the thought process in your mind, you'll be like, holy crap, I can't believe when I think of, when I think of that and I read like that. This is how it sounds like. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll be like, oh, my gosh, I've been searching for this sound. This adjective really helps. All right. So I, I really would love uh, for you to try this out. Build that list. I mean, if you have a voices.com or voice one, two, three account and you've, you know, strategically used other people to help you with it. You should have a whole entire <laughs> list of adjectives that you can use. All right. Uh, I'm, I won't tell anybody, but the point I'm trying to make is, is like get a whole list of adjectives and start practicing. It'll really help out. Okay. Like it'll unbelievably help out. 
All right, you guys, that is my list of things that you can do, ways that you can create characters. And by the way, this goes for any character. This goes commercial work to crazy evil villains to all sorts of things. And by the way, when that first method of the mind map approach, when we go back and talk about the mode of expressiveness, that's where you can really dive into, uh, you know, pointing out things like expressiveness could be maybe you're breathy. Like maybe you're really breathy when you talk and, you know, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? That, that Some people talk like that, right? Uh, maybe you're nasally when you talk. You know, you get everything's up here. I mean, all kinds of different ways. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I just did that for you, but that's okay. All kinds of ways to express. All right, you guys, thank you. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them over in the comments section right now. Um, let's see. We got Big Jim. What up? Shaba, how you doing? Good to see you. Voices. Happy Halloween. Uh, let's see. Woody, what's up? Be dog at 45. Uh, Woody, I've heard of the third method. If you get stuck or s trying to get into a script, kind of loosens you up and breaks a serious streak. Absolutely. Get you in the mindset. Yep. Just staying a fly on the wall for this one. <laughs> uh, hello. Yeah, I know. I probably, you know, very entertaining to watch. Well, anyways, listen, like I said, this video hopefully is giving you really great techniques about how you can start going out there, even for your demo, for anything and starting to work on increasing your abilities as a voice actor to, you know, get work. So, um, if you like the video, go ahead and click the like button. I would really appreciate it. Make sure that you subscribe, uh, share this if you can, if you have anybody else you can share it with and uh, leave a comment. If you have anything else that you would like me to talk about in the future, I would appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful Halloween and I will see you tomorrow. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, somebody's got to, do people still need a mid-Atlantic accent? You need to be do as much as you can. Do as many things as you can. All right? As many things as you can. Uh, believe it or not, I started completely overhauling my character demos a few days ago, editing the video this afternoon. Awesome. All right, you guys caught me up. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>